Hi girls, it's Miss Paige here. Um, today I'm going to be reading Whatever After Bad Hair Day and we are on chapter eight. Chapter eight is titled No Parage in Sight. I guess so, I say with a sigh, still angry about this quandary teasing. Jonah points to a tall tree in the distance. We climb up one of the trees and try to spot the palace. This way we can also keep an eye on the tower to see if the wannabe witch leaves or if Pickles arrives. You know how to climb trees? Rapunzel asks, eyes wide. Jonah nods proudly. Can you show me? Of course, Jonah says. Abby knows too. We've done it before. We can all climb together. We make our way over to the nearest tree and Jonah rubs his hands together eagerly. Prince, you stay here, I order. Stay. Luckily, Prince decides to take the opportunity to chase his tail in a circle. Jonah and I jump up to reach a branch. I hold on to one branch and climb higher and higher. I really have gotten so much better at climbing since we started going through the mirror. If only my class held a climbing tree bees instead of spelling bee. Rapunzel isn't as sure-footed as we are, but soon she starts climbing up too. She gets the hang of it pretty quickly. Her eyes are twinkling and she looks excited to be in the outside world. Whoa! Joan exclaims when he gets to the top. When I join him, I gasp. It's an amazing view. In the distance, there are mountains covered in trees and dazzling waterfalls spilling into blue lakes. There are also dirt roads zigzagging in and around. But the most amazing thing about the views is that there is a haze of multicolored sparkles hovering the mountains. Why are the mountains tw twinkling? I wonder. It's the sunlight bouncing off the kingdom's gemstones, Rapunzel explains, and you can see it from a distance. Gemstones? I wonder. She nods. Generation and generations ago, a wealthy traveler named Tristan discovered that this land is an abundance of gems in the rocks and mountains. Diamonds, emeralds, sapphires, amethysts. He brought a group down to mine them, declaring himself king, and took possession of all the jewels. He named the kingdom Glimmer, after the haze. Frau Gothel gave me a book about it. How do you spell Glimmer? Jonah asks. D-E-L-I-M-M-E-R, Rapunzel says. You are a good speller, Rapunzel, my brother says. My back tightens. Glimmer is an easy word. I could have spelled it too. Jonah turns back to Rapunzel. Can you spell cinnamon? C-I-N-N-A-M-O-N. -N -N Quandary, he asks. Q-U-A-N-D-A-R-Y, she shrugs. I spend a lot of time reading my dictionary. Oh, of course she's a better speller than I am. She's older than me. I don't want to talk about spelling anymore. I glance back at the view. I don't see a castle, do you? No, they both say. What's that blue thing? Jonah asks, pointing. The blue thing he's pointing at, pointing to is moving. Also, it's been led by a small brown dot. Oh, it's a horse. I think it's a carriage, I exclaim. Oh, look, I see an orange one too. There are a bunch of carriages. Let's go. Jonah starts to climb back down the tree. I bet one of them can take us to the palace. Jonah, I say, you're not supposed to ask strangers for rides. He frowns. Oh, right. So what do we do? Well, I say, maybe a parrage will drive by. Just like in Cinderella, Jonah asks. Exactly. Rapunzel shifts her weight on the branch. What's a parrage? A public carriage. I say, like a bus. She blinks. What's a bus? A kind of carriage that takes anyone who pays? She scrunches her eyebrows. I don't think I've ever heard about either of those things. Then I guess you don't know everything, I mutter. Sorry? She asks. I missed what you said. Nothing, I say. Jealous, Jonah says. G-E-L-O-S. Wrong. I tell him. He smiles. Close enough. The three of us carefully shimmy back down the tree. 
Then, with Prince scurrying along beside us, we hike over to the road where I saw the carriages. The walk takes what feels like an hour, but my watch still says twelve o'clock. I'm worried it's broken. I'm also worried about Rapunzel's feet because she's not wearing any shoes. I'm worried about a lot of things. We wait by the side of the road and a bunch of carriages pass by, but Rapunzel was right. There are no carriages in Glimmer, which causes a bit of a problem. How are we going to get to the palace if we can't ask someone for a lift? A carriage drives up and stops in front of us. The sight of a horse so close makes Prince bark like a maniac. The driver, a jolly old man, looks like Santa at the mall. He even has a gray beard. Hello there, he booms. Do you guys need our lift? Yes, Rapunzel says. No, thank you, I say. But you can tell us how to get to the palace. Sure, it's about a two-hour ride that way. He points ahead to the twisty road. But do we turn right at the fort or left? Left, he says. And then right, and then right, and then left, and then right. Are you sure you don't want a lift? Yes, I say unhappily. Good luck, he says and rides away. Now what? Joan asks. We can't walk. We'll get lost for sure. Plus, a two-hour ride would take us a day to walk, at least. I glance down at Rapunzel's feet. They're looking a little beat up. I don't think she can walk for much longer. What are we going to do? Badum, badum, badum. The sound of hoofs make me glance up. A horse is coming down the road, pulling a bright yellow carriage. On the side of the carriage, it says Haxai. What's a Haxai? Jonah wonders. Could it be a horse taxi? I wonder aloud. Yes, yes, I bet it is. I wave to the driver, a lady wearing a purple dress. The lady slows down. Prince barks and jumps. Where to? The driver asks. Are you a horse taxi? I ask. No, I'm a taxi driver, she said. The driver does not look like Santa Claus at all, or even Mrs. Claus. Her hair is bright red and spiky, and she is real thin. She's also wearing brown black glasses that cover most of her face. Does that mean you take people where they want to go and charge them? Jonah asks. She nods. Yep. Hooray! I cheer. A horse taxi! A taxi! She repeats. Perfect, Rapunzel says. Let's get in. Where are you going? The taxi driver asks. She stares at Rapunzel. What happened to your hair? Rapunzel flushes. I cough loudly. We're going to the palace. The woman nods. That will be one sapphire. One sapphire? They pay in gems. Done, Jonah says. Jonah, I don't have any sapphires on me. I don't have any sapphires at all. Do you? He shakes his head. We turn to Rapunzel. Do you have any sapphires? I ask. She shakes her head. Prince wags his tail. No sapphires, no haxi, the driver says, and picks up the reins as though she's about to take off. Wait, I cry. Can we pay with something else? Maybe we can trade you something. Like what? She asks. Do you have any rubies, emeralds, diamonds? E emeralds, diamonds? Nope. I turn to the others. Then what? Then what do you have that's worth anything? I don't even have shoes, Rapunzel says. Speaking of shoes, maybe Jonah could trade his. They cause some problems. She brings a self-conscious hand to her hair. But I just got them, he whines. But they're evil, Rapunzel said. And we need to trade something. Jonah sighs. All right, I'll trade my cleats. He takes them off and offers them to the driver. How about these? She shakes her head. I don't want shoes with spikes on them. They'll ruin my floor. Exactly, I say. Can I have the dog? The driver asks. I've always wanted a dog. Prince whimpers and hides behind my legs. Definitely not, I say, rubbing his fur with my ankle. Hang on, what's that? She asks. She's pointing to my wrist. My watch, I say. It tells the time. She exclaims, um, yeah, isn't that what watches do? Wait, maybe they don't have clocks in fairy tales. No, of course they have clocks. Didn't the clock strike 12 in Cinderella? Wait, 
I know. She's amazed because the watch face doesn't have hands. It's digital, I explained. Does digital mean broken? She scoffs. What kind of watch says 12 when it's already 3.30? My stomach plummets and I look at my wrist. The watch does say 12 o'clock. It can't possibly still be midnight in Smithville, can it? Is time passing that slowly? I'm starting to worry that my watch, in fact, stopped working, which means it could be any time at home. I feel a flash of panic. Then I try to tell myself everything will be fine. Jonah and I always make it back to Smithville before our parents wake up. We will now too, right? That just means we have to move faster. My watch does other things too, I say quickly. At least I hope it does. Want to see something cool? I fiddle with a few buttons. There is a loud beep. It might not be able to tell the time of day, but the stopwatch still works. Big deal, the taxi driver says. My horse makes noises too. It's a timer, I explain frantically while Rapunzel and Jonah watch me hopefully. You could time how long it takes you to get to the palace and then charge us based on that. She looks at me as if I'm crazy. I already told you what I'm charging you. One sapphire. One sapphire that you don't seem to have. This isn't going well. What else can my watch do? Oh, look, it has a light. I press a button and watch, and the watch's face lights up. Wouldn't that be helpful late at night? The taxi driver motions me, motions me closer. Let me see. I press the light button again. Her eyes widen. A magic light? That would be helpful. It's a deal. Give me the watch and I'll take you to the palace. I let out a big breath and exchange relieved glances with Rapunzel and Jonah. Even Prince looked revealed. We have a deal. All right, that's us for chapter eight. Check back in for chapter nine. It is titled Next. Have a good day.